Hi guys, welcome back to another video. And as you know, in Malaysia, we have three COVID-19 tracing apps currently available. And they're all developed by the government and they do different things. But they all pretty much have the same purpose, which is to flatten the curve and to fight the virus. And with three apps available, it can get pretty confusing as to how you use them and which one you should download. In this video, I hope I can clear things up and show you how to use them and it can help you navigate the MCO until it lifts. So let's start with the first app to actually make its appearance, which is the MySejahtera app. I like to think of this app as an all-in-one digital brochure of sorts which gives you all the information you need about COVID-19 including other features and uh, tools as well that help you navigate through the MCO. Now one of the most important features of the MySejahtera app is the self-health assessment feature which you can find in the things to do tab. Here you will find a self-health assessment form which you have to fill up truthfully and at the end of it, depending on the symptoms that you have, it will determine whether you are a low-risk person or high-risk person of being infected with the virus. You can add family members to this list as well. Just head to your profile here, which will bring up a list of other features as well. And here, just tap on Manage Dependents. Once that's done, you can fill in the health assessment form on their behalf. Once you've done that, you can keep track of your health as well as your family's health through this app. Now, if we go back to the list of features again, there are other cool options as well, such as the hotspot tracker, which uses your location to determine how close you are to uh, previously recorded cases. From there, you can also perform a check-in or you can have a quick access to medical hotlines here or you can also get uh, virtual health advisories or pretty much just remote consultations, contacts that you need. And yeah, in terms of UI, it's actually very simple, albeit a little cluttered. But basically, you get uh, updates, news, and information such as statistics on your homepage in the things to know section. If you want more statistics, you can go to the statistics tab in the middle here. And that's pretty much it. That is the MySejahtera app. Now, a lot of questions were raised uh, regarding the disclosing of personal details through these tracing apps. Do know that these apps are developed by the government. So really, there's no information that you can give these apps that the government don't already have. You're really only disclosing your location, which you need to do to access features like the uh, hotspot tracker and the check-in feature. And this leads us to the next app, which is called MyTrace, and it's one of the newer ones to come out. It is a contact tracing app that functions just like Singapore's own trace together. So it uses your Bluetooth, your phone's Bluetooth connection to determine how close you are to someone who may be carrying the virus. And if you are close to that person, you will get a notification on your phone. Uh, your encounter details will be stored in your phone, which the medical professionals will request from you. If you are required to upload these contact information, you will have to go to the upload tab here, which will then show you your code and the medical professional who is on the phone with you will have to cite the same exact code as you. The app does request for your location access, but as the FAQ says here, Android needs location access to enable Bluetooth on the MyTrace app, which it needs to function properly. Now the caveat of MyTrace is that it needs to be running in the background to work properly but you can always tell whether it's running or not by looking at your notifications tray and you can see here. Lastly, we come to Gerak Malaysia which I like to think of as a digital ID or passport of sorts that allows you to travel outside. It generates a QR code that contains your personal information. You produce this when authorities request it, maybe during a, uh, an inspection or a roadblock. This app lets you request for permits to travel within the country or interstate. Once your application is approved, you will be presented with a QR code that as I mentioned, you need to show authorities. Other greater out options include uh, traveling to buy necessities, seeking medical treatment or other emergencies as well. You don't necessarily need to have this running in the background, but let's say if you have an older phone that may be a bit slower and you, if you have traveling plans and have a QR code, I suggest you have it uh, open already, keep it in your pocket once you're at a roadblock, present it to the authorities and don't waste time. Well, that's it for our video today. I hope now you know what these apps are for and how to use them. As you can tell, they are obviously very important and they serve the purpose of flattening the curve. Hopefully, with the help of these apps, we can navigate the MCO and maybe lead to an earlier lift 
of the uh, movement control order, right? So hopefully you have all these apps in your phone already, especially if you plan to travel. Remember guys to stay clean and practice social distancing. Remember to like, subscribe, and until next time, I'm Victor signing off. Bye-bye.